And on a big night for Afghanistan, it is time now for the big question where you get to quiz top celebrities, public figures, decision makers and sports people via GP views. And we've all followed the developments and watched the footage coming out of Afghanistan with horror. But my guest tonight has a personal connection to the tragedy unfolding there. Before he became a best-selling author and a beloved TV personality, Phil Campion was one of the few men to pass selection for the Royal Marines, the Parachute Regiment and the SAS. During his illustrious military career, he was deployed to virtually every conflict-prone corner of the world, including Afghanistan, where he served between 2002 and 2005. Now, as he watches the Taliban return to power after 20 years, he has been left faring for the lives of friends, desperately trying to find a shelter or an escape route from the country. So, Phil Campion, thank you so much for being here. Joe Biden has been unrepentant in the past hour, saying that the US was never in Afghanistan for nation building. It was about counter-terrorism and saying that he will not pass the responsibility of trying to sort out Afghanistan to a fifth president. But what do you think the consequences of this decision will be on the ground? And do you think actually that Afghanistan will yet again become a breeding ground for terrorists? Yeah, I, I, I look at this, you know, from not the, from, from, from without the privilege of Camp David, all right, for a start, where he, where he, where he sat and rode it out quite nicely. On right? his own. On his own. Yeah, on yeah, his yeah, own. yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't bother going back to the White he, House. Look, what these people need to do is look at it from the eyes of people who are actually on the ground. Mm. There's some very nice people in Afghanistan, and there's some very loyal, true people mm. in Afghanistan. And they've been completely thrown under the bus. Absolutely thrown under the bus. Destroyed. Do you know what I mean? We propped up their army. We were helping them. We, 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 there was never an extra strategy put in place that was sufficient enough to cope with the demand that they needed. All right? And for him to then go sort of like behind closed doors and go, right, I'll, tell you what, I'll chuck the towel in and I'll run out before it's even hit the floor. And he had, the, he had the nerve to say that they haven't d done their bit. Oh, come on, you know. And you have friends in Kabul who you believe may well be executed. I, have, uh, yeah, I know people in Kabul. I'm, I'm, I'm tracking a couple of people now. Um, I was just, just correct you, I, I, I was out there as a civilian between 2001, so I didn't serve there with the military, but I was out there working for the European Commission. Um, you know, there's people there who, who I know now have got, have got very limited choices. You know, you hide or you run away. Because, you know, although there hasn't been too much sort of like publicity around how the Taliban have moved in, you bet your bottom dollar there's going to be some retribution for one, what went on. Of course. And, you know, people will firm up their own, their own sort of like deal by, by throwing other people into, into the way of what's coming, won't they, you know? Well, and just... I've seen it before because it was happening when we got there. Anyone who was deemed to be Taliban when we got there... People, people were grassing them up left, right and centre, do you know what I mean? And now they've sort of like thrown the Taliban, you know, thrown the pakul on the floor and they're putting the turbans on again, aren't they? So. Well, absolutely, and I'm sorry, Big Phil, you, you do not have people grasping on to planes like we saw today, taking off in the hope that they're somehow going to that get out horrendous. alive, unless they believe they're going to be killed. That, that is horrendous, that is horrendous. You know, people, you know, that is your last chance. Your last chance is to grab hold of the plane as it flies off. I mean, come on, that, that, is, that, that shows you the gravity of this, if nothing else. Do you know what I mean? Let, let me just say, you know, a lot of veterans have got hold of me today, very distressed by what they've seen, very upset. And I'd like to just pass on that, look, you did your part in this to the best you could. The failings have come from, from, from the people in the ivory towers. You, you conducted yourself with valour and, and, and did the best you ever could. So, you know, there are numbers, if you're struggling with this, that you can phone up. So I did need to get in. I'm sorry if I jacked you a little bit. No, but there are I... numbers that, you know, people can phone. The British Army have put numbers yeah. up. Um, and I know that people are extremely upset with this. Do you know what? I think about how upset I feel. Carol Malone, who's on our Superstar panel tonight, was in tears earlier. Yeah. I cannot imagine who, how you must feel if you I, I, fought you know, in I've Afghanistan, never... if you risked your life, if well, you I've... lost a leg, if you lost a friend, if you lost a son or a daughter. I... I... Can't imagine how that must feel. No, absolutely devastated. It's, you know, again, the ivory tower don't look at the, sh at the shop floor, do they? They're never there. They don't feel the devastation. They don't see the pain. They don't see people rehabilitating for months on months on months. Do you know what I mean? Stumbling about on crutches and prosthetic limbs and all that sort of stuff. They don't see that. Or, all they see is how many ticks they get in the box on the next time they get the voting yeah. day. Or the women 
or the young girls now being turned into sex. Absolutely, you know, all, all that sort of stuff's going to go back. You know, yeah, you know, people well, ask the question, already. should we have been in there in the first already. place? Well, we, 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 we like to promote ourselves as, as being a democratic society, and, and, and we've, we've tried to sell that module around the world, haven't we? Do you know what I mean? At some stage, you're going to get your hands dirty, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? That's, 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 that's the way Absolutely. it is, which is a... Do you have some sympathy for Boris Johnson, though, in the UK government? And, and, I'll, and I'll ask you... In this way, because yeah. I believe Boris Johnson knew what was coming. He's been writing about the fact that the Taliban could take over Afghanistan within three weeks, as far back as 2009. I went back and, and found some of his columns uh, from the Daily Telegraph it, at that time. So, so he knew what the, ta what the well, Taliban could do, but that, how could we stay in so without you, you the that. Allied forces? So, so if that was the case, why was there not more emphasis put on a, on a decent exit strategy? Yeah. Why were we rotating our troops through that every two years? Why were they only doing six-month tours? Why, weren't we do, why don't we have a five-year team in place so we could actually get a grip on them and, and have some sort of... Like, skill sets that went all the way through and, and saw this thing out to the end. Why wasn't it fought like that? So Boris botched it? Uh, uh, look, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of anger towards everybody at the moment, and until the dust settles, I don't want to actually apportion blame to anybody, but through a series of catastrophic errors, some small, some big, we've got to a situation where we've ended ourselves where we started. All right? That, and that's the, the horrendous truth of it. All right? So, where, you know, the scenes I saw when I got into Kabul, which wasn't far after the fall, where everybody was jubilant and, 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 and happy with what had happened, it's the opposite of that now. You know, and there's grinning lunatics behind desks with AK-47s now presiding on your well-being. Mm. <laughs> Thanks for that. Who said they were, some of them, locked up in Guantanamo Bay. I mean, it, it beggars... It beggars belief. It, it, it beggars also belief. beggars that we need to have a very close look at our, our foreign policy and how we can conduct business in the future as well, because Islamic terrorism hasn't gone away. And it's already, you know, as, as someone alluded to earlier on one of your programmes, Nigeria, you know, all over Africa, this stuff is still going on. So we need to find a module that works, all right? And if the army's going to have this sort of like thing where they say fail, learn, win, all right, we've just had a failure, we need to learn from it, and we need to progress that forward when we go forward. Do you think Afghanistan becomes a hotbed for terrorism again almost immediately under the Taliban? Look, you've had the Russians gobbing off about how they're going to stay in Kabul. You've got the Chinese interest. From the Taliban's PR point of view at the moment, it would be absolutely disastrous for them to suddenly be a hotbed of terrorism. It will creep in eventually because that's the way they are and that's what they want. They've got their policies quite clearly, you know, sh sh shrouded around them. And, and, and eventually, you know, they, there will be cases, I would imagine, where that sort of activity will resume over there if it's not kept under a tight lid and if the powers that be. What we do need to do is sit around a table with everybody and see if we can sign work something out, do you know what I mean? Instead of doing a little bit of here, a little bit of there, a little bit of there. If all these powers, you know, the Chinese, the, the Russians, the, the Americans... NATO, which has failed miserably again, the UN, which has failed. If they had have all taken this seriously and, and, and used a common sense approach and pulled everything together a lot sooner, the exit strategy would have been in place. Blah 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 blah. We might not be in this position, but we, can't but we trust certainly the couldn't Taliban, leave it how it was. Can we? No, you can't trust the Taliban further than you can throw them. They need looking at twenty four seven. They've got they've got a lot of proving to do. They've got a lot of proving to do. And at the moment, they've got they've got a sheet and a track record which is absolutely horrendous. And we know what that is about, don't we? You know, we've we've seen it before. You know, but, you know, like I say, the dust will settle and we'll see what falls out the other side and then people need to assess the best course of action from there. But Biden says, look, there's nothing we could have done. We've been there for 20 years. We tried. It was impossible. Biden's had a holocaust with this. Biden's had an absolute nightmare with this. All right? he's, 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 he's talking completely out of turn. He's probably never stepped foot in a combat zone in his life. He would not understand a single feeling from person on the ground there. All right, he's got no idea whatsoever. He's talking completely out of tune. All right, so... Well, he might he didn't... If literally, about 34 days ago, he didn't believe that the Taliban could take over the country. No, and then he's saying, you know, well, what was it, 90 days? They've done it in 90 minutes. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's an horrendous... It's an horrendous situation. If he was going to do that, like I say, he should have put proper provision in place. And it's no good going all five years, ten years... It should have been looked at in such a way that it could be done in an acceptable manner. But to prop somebody up and to suddenly pull away that support and to expect things to go smoothly. Well, it doesn't matter who's, whose responsibility it is to look after Afghanistan. You've just stitched them up. Look, Big Phil, we've got loads of questions coming on uh, for you from our brilliant viewers, so cool. I want to get to them. Janet, uh, on the GB News Twitter account, asks, First of all, thank you for your years of service. 
But do you honestly think that if we go back into Afghanistan, the Afghans will learn anything more from us? Or after another 20 years, will we be back at this same point? And that is a fair question, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's a very good question. I think that if you would have been over there and met some of the Afghans that I've met personally, who are very nice, respectable people who want nothing but peace for their country, then you would say, yes, it's worth fighting for. If you then, on the other flip side of the coin, when you're pumping money, you give it to the wrong people who disappear with it and do the wrong stuff with it, you're just creating a circle that's just full of distrust. Yes, I do believe that if we really want to promote democracy around the world, how can we stand by and let that happen? How can we stand by after all the stuff that we say and let women have their rights completely taken away from them? That's completely wrong, and we can all see that. All right? But what we need to do is find a way of doing this which suits all parties in the best and safest manner. You know, God forbid we've got troops there now. We've got troops there now. And, and, and the number one concern from all this at the moment for me is let's get them all out. Let's get everybody out who deserves to come out. That includes interpreters and anybody who, who, who's really going to f- fall down victim to this the most. Let's get them all out. Let's get them back. And let's, get them, let, let, let's then assess what, how to move forward. But for now, all we can really do is assess. Siona on GB Views asked, and I know a lot of people are thinking about this today, does Phil think President Trump would have dealt with the withdrawal of Afghanistan better? Very difficult question, because obviously, you know, Biden's picked up the gauntlet that was laid down by Trump. Um, I would have hoped personally that Trump would have probably listened to his advisers in a different way. And historically, he does seem to be a man of the people more than Biden does. Biden's a a man of the establishment, whereas Trump was more of a man of the people, in my my opinion. Okay, I know lots of people don't like Trump, and I can understand for many reasons why they don't. Okay, but you know, we're talking we're talking two sandwiches that stink here. You've got to pick up the one that that stinks the less, haven't you? All right. Okay, from my opinion. So that's that's the way I look at it. But no, I think he might have handled things differently. I don't think he would have bolted just quite as quick as Biden did. He wouldn't have wanted to lo- lose this badly, would he? So even though this was his plan to begin with, yeah, you, I think you the, get the, the, the idea plan was right to get out of there. But we should have been saying that ten years ago. Hindsight is a wonderful thing, and he had all these things that like, sort of, you know going on periphery, the poppies, this, that, the other. You could not have picked a worse time to do this. Do you know what I mean? You could not have picked a worse time to do this. Again, who was advising them of that? It wasn't one of the troops on the ground. It would not have been one of the troops on the ground because they'd have said, "Whoa, hold your horses. Let's get this rolled out properly." Victoria via GB Views asks, how do you feel about Biden laying the blame of the Taliban takeover down to the Afghan military for, quote, unquote, not fighting? I'd like to stick him in a room with their headshed. You know, I'd like to see him come up against, you know, Private Bacon from the ANA army, who's probably not been paid, not been fed, not not had. And then all of a sudden you've pulled away every asset they had from him. Oh, there's no airstrike coming in today, son, because they've gone home. Really? Oh, thanks. One of the troops, they ain't. Oh, right, OK, what choices have I got? Well, the Taliban are coming. Oh, dear. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm off. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I can't, you can't blame them. You can't blame them. So to say that is an horrendous thing. He's always calling them cowards. They, oh, no, that's, that, that, that was wrong for him to say that, totally. I don't, I don't like that at all. That's, that's wrong. Billy, via the GB News Twitter account, asks, is Sharia law compatible with the 21st century? It's not compatible with, with the 21st century that I want to be part of. It's compatible with the 21st century that some of them want to be part of, all right? But no, it's not. And, you know, democracy is part of the 21st century I want to be part of. We've got to work together and try and see if there's, there's some way we can strike an accord in the middle. It's a difficult thing to do. But no, Sharia law doesn't figure in my plans. No. At all. It absolutely <laughs> shouldn't, should it? No. Uh, when you were there, did you know when you were speaking to someone who was either a member of the Taliban or a Taliban sympathiser? Was there a way that you could tell? There, there, were, there was regional people. You had the Pashtuns, you had this, you had that, you know, the Cheeks, you had, you know, the people up in Dostrum's area, up north at Mazar and places like that. You had a rough idea what their alliances were. You knew if they were Northern Alliance, you know, you, you, you could probably tell. On the whole, the people that I met, and we did it very well at the European Commission's Embassy, as, as, you, as you would imagine, they were inclusive of everybody. They wanted to have represent, which didn't always work, by the way, do you know what I mean? Because I have to keep the Pashtuns off the back of the Tajikis and all that sort of stuff. But as a whole, you know, most of the people I met were just normal people who maybe had one view or another, but for the good of the collective people of Afghanistan, just wanted to move the thing forward with as much minimum fuss and effort, get their, their, get their children educated, get themselves fed, and lead a, lead a half-normal life. And did they believe in women's rights? A lot of people did, all right? But then, you know, 
a lot of people didn't. And you're hitting the end of a regime that was very sort of like anti that, aren't you? So there would have been people there, a few eyebrows raised, you know, when women start dropping the burqa and coming out. And I, I was going to say, they didn't sort of like just drop the burqa, jump straight in a mini and run down the road. It was done very respectfully over a period of time to bring them back. And even now, they're still veiled up and that sort of stuff, do you know what I mean? So, you know, their culture and their religion dictates how they behave. The extremities of all these things dictate it at the next level, and that's when it goes wrong, isn't it? We all know if you go too far right or too far left, you're, you're in a world of hurt, because it's just, it's just lunatics out there. Well, no matter what the Taliban might try to say in this latest PR operation, we know they don't believe in women's rights. Quite the opposite. They don't believe uh, in women they, being they, able to have very an education. Famous. They don't believe yeah. in women being able to work. They really don't believe in most women yeah, leaving I mean, there the was house. A, there was an interview, very clearly remember watching it before this all started, where, the, where they're interviewing him, and the guy's just scoffing. As soon as he says women's rights, he's like, really? You know, he's scoffing at them, and that almost blames the Western problems you've got, because you're not beating your wife hard enough. Do you know what I mean? That's ridiculous. So, Big Phil, let's look ahead now. Do we need to go back in? What is the solution here? What should Boris Johnson be doing? Right, we need to look, look stand alone as the UK. We can't do nothing like that. We aren't big enough, you know. We, 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 we've, got to, we've got to look after our own assets. We've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to try and go with a coalition on this. That, that's, that's clear, all right? We, we have to do that. But, a look, NATO coalition? We need to... The, a NATO, a UN, or, or, or with the US. We, 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 we can't do this on our own. But I feel that we, we're, we're obliged to at least sit back, analyse this problem. But first and foremost, we need to get everybody out that we've got a shade of responsibility for. We've got to try and make sure that we get them all home safe. We've got to try and make sure that we can accommodate them all when they get here, because some of them won't be from here. And like it or lump it, you know, we've put them in danger. We need to put them up now. All right, that, that, that that's, goes without saying for me, because I know very, very brave men who've been on some extremely tough missions, you know, risk their lives just so that they can speak to other people for us. All right, OK, we took them. They didn't ask to come. We took them, all right? So they at least deserve <coughs> some sanctuary, all right? They also deserve the same as everybody else. You know, whether you be the ambassador of Kabul or whether you be, you know, Private Bacon Neck from the ANA Army, who's now being threatened to have his head cut off, they need to be brought along into the fold and they need to be got out of there, OK? That, that, that's, just, that's just human, you know what I mean? That's, that, that's, what we des that's what they deserve. Big Phil Campion, if only we had you in charge. It's been <laughs> such a pleasure to have you tonight, and we'll keep talking to you, of course, as this crisis unfolds. That's Big Phil Campion with tonight's Big Question. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.